Hi there, Lloyd Macedo speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com, who is Lloyd Macedo, Think Parcel Branding. Okay, today I'm going to speak to you on a rather off topic, uh, which I'm pretty sure will have controversial <laughs> views, especially from our women, because mine is a very, uh, you know, channel for boys and men. So women will not feel very happy with my views, especially Western women and feminists. So they'll be like, law, you're a misogynist and you're a <laughs> sexist and all that stuff. Okay. But anyway, I'll still give you my views, my channel, my views. So you, you are free to disagree with me. Okay. Now, the topic that I'm going to speak to you about today is why you should not get married early and why you should not get married to especially someone your age. It should not be the same age. And I'll... And I'll give you, I have around, I've written behind on my iMac, I've written seven reasons. So I'll give you the seven reasons. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. I'm very interested to know your point of view. Feel free, feel free. And if you feel like telling me, oh yeah, you're, you know, like some people, one guy commented, your fourth marriage will not survive or some stuff like that. You know, your fourth marriage, please feel free. I, I welcome comments. I, I don't take it personally. Okay. you I encourage you to disagree with me. Okay. So having said that, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you my seven points, and uh, here they are. The first one. Let me see what is the choice. Okay. Um, see, the first reason why you should not get married early, or why uh, you know you should not marry uh, at a young age. One of the big reasons, the biggest one is, you know, the choices we make when we are young. As we grow older, we make a different set of choices. For example, when you are ten years old. What did you like? You may be like chocolates, you may be like cartoons, you may be like, you know, whatever. When you're 10 years old. When you're 15 years old, the chocolates that you liked when you're 10 or the cartoons or the programs or the people changed. When you're 20, it changed again. When you're 25, it changed again. When you're 30, it changed again. So if you give yourself increments of every five years, your taste, your preferences, everything changes over the period of time. Like the like the girls I was dating when I was 20 years old, today when I think about it, I'm like, what the fuck was I even thinking? Like, yeah, this... <laughs> In one of my previous videos, I even made the mistake of... Kind uh, of, kind of, I didn't give the name, revealing who the person was. In fact, the same girl got in touch with me on my Facebook and said, she had a different name and said, Loy, remember me and all that? And uh, I was like, who the fuck is this? And... Uh, you know, um, who was, she, she kind of asked me, who was the girl you were dating? So, yeah, <laughs> I did the mistake, the embarrassment of saying, man, I was dating this girl who was, fuck, you know, this girl, I wouldn't even date her, yuck, if she was the last person on the planet. And to my horror, she, it turned out to be the very same girl. She's like, Loy, how dare you talk about <laughs> me like that? It was so bad. I was like, oh my goodness, it's you. Fuck, I can't believe. I mean, she, to be very honest, with you, she is absolutely, obviously, she would say the same thing. I would never date a guy like you, you know. I, I don't blame her because when you're young, there are so many things you do or you think of. I mean, there are so many embarrassing things that we have done, even from having sex when you don't know how to have sex and you do yuck. You, uh, you know, there are so many things like I didn't know you had to wash your private parts before having sex. Or, you know, stinky, smelly that it was. I didn't know that. Uh, I know I'm getting a little graphic here. I didn't know that uh, a girl has to prepare herself for having sex. I thought it naturally happens. Like when you see the movie, just, oh, you rush into the hotel room and you start ripping your clothes off and all. Well, obviously you should prepare yourself. So in the same way, with regards to, you know, love or relationships or whatever, I mean, you think you know life. You think you know what you're doing. But in hindsight, today, when I look back, uh, the girl who I was talking about when I was, I think, 16 or something, I dated her. Today, when I look at her, no fucking way. Absolutely. Physically, she is not at all uh, like, okay, agreed. She's out of shape today. But if I were to go back in time, that wouldn't be the girl that I would ever date. I can seriously assure you. And forget that. You know, the girl who I tattooed her face is here. I mean, I bumped into her, I think, nearly after 10 years. I bumped into her online. 
and when i was talking to her, i i i couldn't believe that this was the same girl who was who was ready to die for who i couldn't i was literally crying when i knew that she was going to leave me this is 10 years ago when i met her that time uh, i met her when i was 31 she got in touch with me when i was nearly 40 41 and i just realized fuck this girl is so immature she's fucking a, and she turned out to be irritating i was like i couldn't even tolerate talking to her this is not to put her down i'm i'm being very honest she was still beautiful she was still sexy and great figure but mentally when i spoke to her i realized i had grown so much as an individual she was still talking nonsense and she oh my janu my teddy bear my bdbd i was like get the fuck out of my face I'm like what the fuck is this you know so the first point that i need you to keep in mind is we evolve as we grow some grow a lot some grow a little in fact there are people who i know who are like in my school days are absolute idiots uh, they have grown to become like uh, you know commercial directors or they become uh, regional heads of you know multinational companies they are so mature some of them are even gone to uh, join like you know very senior political parties as advisors i mean today if you talk to them they are very polished uh, one of them who I know, he was like a stinky, smelly, running nose uh, kind of guy who wouldn't dress up properly. And today he dresses up in an Armani, he has a fucking Bugatti and all that. It's like, fuck, look what happened to him. So people change. That's what I'm trying to tell you. People change, they evolve. So the choices that you make when you're young, when you look back, you're like, fuck, what was I even thinking? So if you do end up getting married when you're young, most probably, most probably, you would be like, what the fuck was I thinking? That is if you are a person who evolves and grows. If you're one of those, you know, like, uh, you know, our parents or grandparents, if you're the same person doing the same thing with the same skills and nothing as well, fine, you'll be very happy to be married together. But if you're a person who evolves and grows, when you look back, you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. So that's the first thing. If you get married to someone when you're young, in a few years time, you'll be like, fuck man, what, you know, how could I make such a decision? Okay, so that's the first one. Remember, there's so much more to life that you have seen, not seen, countries that you have not gone through, people you have not met. In fact, if you were to have access to all the girls, all the guys, all the options, I can challenge you and tell you that 99 out of 100 times, you wouldn't choose that person. This is from experience sometimes and this is not me to trying to put you down. Okay, so that's number one. So the first one is the choices that we make later in life are always better. Number two is if you get married to someone who is your age or someone who knows you from a long time, they will love you, they will like you, but they'll not like look up to you. They'll not have that respect that someone who meets you later on in life like for example my wife i am 45 going to be 45 in january my wife is 27 28 you know because there is this 15 16 year gap my wife looks up to me she in fact she tells me you're uh, when you talk to me sometimes it's like my a father talking to me because obviously i've seen life i now don't get that sugar daddy kind of uh, thing in your head but i've seen life in fact, when I married her, she had never been on an airplane. She had never traveled in an aircraft. She had never been to, you know, pizza in. She never ordered all this because she was born poor. She was born poor from a very simple village. So, you know, giving her her own laptop, giving her own uh, room and pocket money and bank account and all this. It was like, wow, you know. So she always looks up to me as he has seen life and he can guide me, you know. So that kind of respect is there. But if you meet someone who is equal to you, obviously they'll not look up to you because, you know, and especially if the person's highly educated and traveled and all, then that, that thing is on. So now I know what you'll say. Oh, so Loy, should we get someone from the village just like you, you know, just to feel uh, your, uh, what, uh, your uh, insecurities, just to feel like an alpha male, you'll get someone who's weaker. I'm not saying that. Now, if you do want to get great, they will always look up to you. But if you get someone who has done more than you, traveled much more than you, 
been with more men than you then they'll be uh, you know it's uh, to put it in a very crude way someone who has tasted uh, 10 10 20 sausages she will know how each sausage tastes uh, 10 different sausages have entered her she will know who gives her better pleasure so and if you are not up to the mark she'll always compare you this is a reality she'll compare you to the other men that she has had in her life like for example me i've had so many women in my life obviously unconsciously i compare she was good in bed she sucks she swallows she does this she does that even the way she treats me not just sex uh, the way she treats me the way she respects me so our, we are human beings who compare and contrast that's why even when you buy you compare my iphone to this android phone we do that unconsciously so same way a woman who has been with so many men who has traveled the world she'll compare she'll know what is your standard where are you and that creates complications i'll tell you whether you like it or not it does create complications okay so you know she will if she has seen life and she has had so many options and on top of that you both are the same age she'll never respect you she will like you she'll tolerate you but she'll never respect you and believe it or not that is very very important especially if you are from a culture a community which believes in respect if you are one of those western why hey you know you call your father by his name your mother by his name and you don't give a fuck you can hey how are you come here and fine then don't give a fuck but if respect is important then this proves to be a very big factor at least for me i can tell you no matter how modern or whatever i am end of the day i believe there should be a certain hierarchy in a relationship in even your house and even your children they should respect you and give you you know there should be obedience others is going to be utter chaos i'm sorry but i'm old fashion and i like being old fashion over there this having this uh, kid call his mother hey call her by the name hey dad you not that calling like my my step brother i mean i was shocked when after he went to australia when he came back uh, he was i think he was 20 something and he called my mother i used to call her mum and he call her hey helen and the father i used to always call her dad and he started calling hey pinto how are you man and i was like what the fuck is this you should respect no this is modern he suddenly became modern this is when he was 20 today he is a different changed man he is 30 i think he's 30 35 something okay we have a major age gap okay so respect um they would never respect you point number 3 i'm looking at my screen now huh? um this one is i think you would be able to understand familiarity breeds contempt listen to this again familiarity breeds contempt if someone knows you for many years they'll take you for granted i'll give you a simple example now indra noi if i say indra noi you know that the main head of ceo ceo of pepsi sorry pepsico she was a finance person she became the head of pepsi I don't know the exact designation. Uh, she gave a beautiful example in one of the videos. She was saying, when she got appointed as the head of uh, PepsiCo, she went to her mother and she told her mom, "Mom, you know, I've been appointed as the head of PepsiCo." Now, any normal person would be like, "Wow, oh shit, you're the head of PepsiCo, being of Indian origin, you're running a global company." But what did her mother say? This is an actual example, huh? not from my own pocket. Her mother. immediately told her okay um, don't forget to bring what milk and bread milk and bread for the husband or her husband it's finished just go to the market go get it and come <laughs> so, so she was giving that example uh, and the reason why she said it is for her mother for her mother even if she was the ceo of a company she was still her daughter and she still had to do the errands of the house for her husband she was not the ceo of the company she was still do work you know you are supposed to do work so the ceo of pepsico ceo who is respected globally who is looked upon as industry leaders and analysts look up to her in a house a husband and parents are like they, she was still a girl she was still the daughter same way for me there are so many people ceos and directors who say who literally sometimes they even call me sir loy you know they respect me and call me mr loy <laughs> but my family members hey loy hey come here hey who ha who they 
and so, some of them are just they have not achieved anything uh, they are just normal everyday people like some of them even work as waiters and cleaners they'll say eh loy come what 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 now i don't expect them to say your highness or sir no i'm telling you a fact it's where familiarity breeds contempt in fact the amount of respect that i get from my wife and my wife's family is so much they 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 treat me like a king you might say okay because they are poor but even though i stay with them i live with them like a normal poor person i sleep on the floor no ac nothing the toilet is you know squatting down you know uh, the the respect that they give me is so incredible but <laughs> if i were to meet my relatives hey no yeah nothing here you know maybe financially you, you will be surprised financially maybe my wife's family is more than them they are that poor still there's no respect so what i'm trying to tell you is when someone knows you over the years they'll take you for granted and the best example of this is check the children of successful people the children of success they don't give a fuck about their parents they don't care a damn they take them for granted but to the outside world we would look up to them so this is a reality of life familiarity breeds come your children will always take you for granted your relatives will always take you for granted no matter how great your achievement is point number 4 oh this one is a tough one and you will not realize this unless you have actually been there the you know the children who have been protected by their parents who have been given a good life who have not seen a tough life they will they will talk big they will talk very big oh like i i get 13 year olds 13 year old just imagine on my youtube and with hey dog d a w g hey dog hey bro hey you know loy you yeah. know how's it going man what the fuck is happening to you man they will talk to me like this is 13 year olds in real life obviously they will not have the guts to talk like that but but there are also youngsters who have not seen anything of life but they'll talk to you as if hey what the fuck man you know what the fuck you know that's how they'll talk but what have they done what have they accomplished what have they achieved zero absolutely nothing the funny thing is their parents will make them feel oh my daughter is so special oh my son is so talented but when they go out in the real world nobody gives a fuck to them nobody even looks at them they're like hey get the fuck out of my face why because yeah your mom and dad can put you on the head as a god or you know feel great about you but the real world doesn't give a fuck about you so in the same way these these uh, you know the if you get a girl who has been treated like the eighth wonder of the world by their parents not seen any of the realities of life but has incredible self confidence and then if you marry that person so from one comfort zone of protective nest she has just moved over to another protective nest that is you well she doesn't know any of the realities or she doesn't know divorce she doesn't know what it is to suffer like a normal person she doesn't know what it is to lose a job she doesn't know what it is to uh, be penniless like you know i have literally eaten from the dustbin i've eaten from the dustbin i've slept on the streets i've had i've been raped i've gone through horrific horrific stuff in life i'm sure there are people who have gone worse than me but now imagine if i were to tell this to a youngster like you know i've been raped i've gone through all this i've eaten you'll not believe the response that these youngsters give wow that's inspiring man you have gone through a lot to life but that doesn't mean you know they will lecture you these youngsters will lecture you yeah so that doesn't mean that that's everything this mortal imagine a teenager who has not had a single days of work experience will lecture you you're 50 years old and they'll tell you on the realities of life why because internet social media so this is another problem they don't know any of the realities of life but they lecture you so that's point number 4 if you get married to someone who's your age or someone who is you know you meet them at a young age they have not seen anything point number 5 this one is especially with asian uh, families 
they'll have so many expectations, so many rules and regulations. Like you have to meet their family, their relatives, uh, you know, get togethers and this and that. And there's so much of drama and so much of nonsense, especially Indian families. Oof. Oh, auntie is come. Oh, uncle is come. Oh, you have to meet them. Oh, you have to meet here. You have to go there. You have to... During Christmas, New Year, Diwali, it's such a bloody headache. It stops being you focusing on yourself and it becomes start focusing on the image that you have to show everyone. In fact, um, my ex-girlfriend, I've told you this, she rejected me. Why? Because she told me, Loy, how can I show you to my friends and relatives and what will society say? Well, she did manage to get a guy who was fitting into the image of society. He was six feet and handsome and well-built and highly educated, but their marriage didn't last. He dumped her ass after she got a thyroid problem and uh, now he has a hot wife, wives or girlfriends or whatever. Well, he, she, he used the same logic on her. How can I show you to my family, relatives and all that? Because she was fat and ugly now. So the problem is, one is this. You have to be as per society. The other thing is, they'll busy, you know, talk into your ears and, oh, you know, he has to act like this. Oh, what the hell is he doing? They brainwash you. And that fucks up everything. Especially when you have people, you know, chirping into your ears and giving you information, how to act, how to behave. That is why with my wife, I've told her, no relatives, no friends, nobody comes in, nobody gets involved in our lives. I don't want drama. I want peace. In the house. You can see right now. Can you hear my wife? Can you hear my kids? They're there. But no noise. Because I'm the boss of the house. And I I don't know about you. Maybe you'll say, oh, you're a male chauvinistic pig and all that. Fine, whatever. But I'm the boss of my little house. And there's incredible peace. Maybe you might not uh, subscribe. To, you'll be like, ah, oh, you know, you're a small fish in a a tiny pond or a big frog in a well fine whatever but I'm very happy and this peace of mind this this harmony in the relationship I don't know about you but for me it's priceless okay point number six this is also another very controversial uh, statement that I'll give you but there can only be one boss in the house there can only be one CEO of a company there can only be one head of the table. If you start having two people as CEOs, there will always be a clash. That is why partnership, it's very tough to make it work. Now agreed, people will say marriage is where you both are equal. It sounds good on paper, but the reality of life is when you're dealing with two different personalities, with their egos, their expectations, things can go out of control very fast. Now, in a perfect world, both would be loving, understanding, caring and all that. But let's face it, we have different personalities, different temptations, different pleasures, different guilty pleasures, different um, imperfections. And that can really prove to be a thorn in the backside. And especially when you have people who don't forget a bad incident and they keep bringing it up, it can cause a lot of problems. So... If you're like me and you like to be the boss of the house and have a strategy and tell them what is to be done, fine. But if you're not like this, then have. You both are equal. Both will discuss. Both will uh, debate and have the drama and all that. You'll have drama in the office. You'll have drama with your clients. You'll have drama here and you'll have drama in the house also. And then you'll have drama with your children also. So if that appeals to you, fine. Nothing like it. But I'm sorry. Me? No. It doesn't work that way. And so if you're old fashioned, then having someone your age is a big headache. Point number seven, men and women will never be equal. Why? Because they are never the same. Men have manly stuff, testosterone, you know, the boys night out and uh, men, you know, they just built differently. Women, on the other hand, emotions, feelings, and, you know, they talk to each other. They are built differently. So when you have men and women, two different from two different planets and two different ways of thinking, and you're trying to make them both equal, I mean, yeah, agreed. There are people like, maybe you'll give the example of Jordan Peterson or Obama or President Macron or whatever. 
fine. If you are like them, if your personality is like theirs and their spouse is exactly like your spouse, fine, great. I'm not saying that people can't be happy or people can't get along. But it's very hard. The possibility and probability of it happening. So that is why when men and women are built differently, the dynamics are very different. So that's why I believe that a man has his place, woman has hers. See, overall, what I'll tell you is, we live in a day and age today where social media information is in excess and people can end up getting brainwashed. So if you want to make your life less complicated, then you need to keep it that way. But if on the other hand, you have these rules that, yeah, if you love each other, you have to fight and you have to, then all the best to you. For me, I prefer less drama, less complications. I would just like to end by stating that that doesn't mean you have to, after hearing my video, it doesn't mean you have to marry someone who's too young. If you marry someone who's too young, you'll have also another headache. Like my wife, when she was young, she never wanted to marry a foreigner. She never wanted to marry someone with a tattoo. She never wanted, she wanted someone who's young, handsome, a Thai guy. But look what she got. But the only reason she said yes to this is because she ended up getting a guy who was handsome, young, Thai, but turned out to be a disaster because she realized quickly that just because he's handsome and he's Thai and he's from her culture and all that doesn't mean that it's going to work out. So she went through one very painful relationship and then the second one proved to be even worse. And that is why she decided, okay, the next one will be maybe non-Thai. And lo and behold, I dropped out of the sky and she never thought she would accept a guy with a single tattoo. She ended up getting married to a guy with full tattoos. And that also was an ex-playboy out of all the things. Lucky for her, I was at that phase of my life where I decided enough of playing around, I'll be serious. And I would like to believe that I'm a good father, a good husband and who is transparent and who is honest. So... You know, don't take someone who's too young. At the same time, especially don't take someone who expects the sun, moon and stars. And biggest one is don't take someone who is immature about life. Immaturity is good, but being molded into fitting into your world is better. I know I'm speaking like a typical male chauvinistic pig. You, I wouldn't deny that. But if you are mature enough as a man, if you're mature enough to take care of your finances, your life and everything, and you're looking for a partner to support you, fine, this would work out. But if you yourself are mature and you are a complete disaster, then obviously you'll make the wrong choices. Anyway, I wanted to give you my perspective as to why you should not get married early and why you should not get married to someone who's equally your same age, because there are quite a number of challenges here. Anyway. Uh, we have a big world out there, so many different personalities, types of people. I'm sure my advice may not work everywhere in the same way. Just as you have a very unique personality, everyone else is different. So anyway, this is just what I wanted to share with you. Let me know if you think I'm right or wrong. Love to hear from you. And please feel free to disagree. I've given you seven points. Let me know what you think. Having said that, this means signing off. You guys take care.